सहनो भुनक्तु सह वीर कर वह तेजस्वीतमस्तुमा विदिषा वह so while we have dakshina murti up i thought we can you know go through the symbolism in the deity we have already started from bottom up so we will finish that and then go to the next dhyana shlokas uh, we have seen the four students वृद्धा वर्षिष्ठांते अंते वसदृशि गणैहि वी हैव सीन अपस्मारा एंड देन वी हैव सीन देन द पोज इज वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग द पोज इज विथ अ यू नो राइट लेग डाउन एंड द लेफ्ट लेग क्रॉस्ड एंड इट गिव्स द यू नो इट्स अ वेरी बैलेंस्ड पोज एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू द यू नो अकॉर्डिंग टू द Uh, science of yantras or sacred you know geometry we have kind of triangles forming and these triangles you know they represent uh, the masculine and the feminine forces in one you know so it's kind of a very balanced pose um, and the lord is in repose because the lord is both masculine and feminine a fact that is you know iterated and made clear in the different ear rings if you look here it's like lord dakshina murti had a wardrobe malfunction <laughs> look at the differences in the ear rings so the left earring the right earring and the left earring are completely different you know just like when you get dressed quickly you wear some mismatched uh, shoes and earrings and then just go to work just like that the lord busy with trying to maintain and res- resolve the jagat that give birth to the jagat was very busy and wore mismatched earrings no na then what is going on here this is a symbolism to show this is a woman's earring a feminine earring so the left side of the lord is feminine and the right side is masculine that's what the whole idea is so just like this is a subtle form of another deity which is uh, ardhanarishvara in the tradition half ishvara half ishvari so here we have different earrings a subtle nod to the shakti so the lord is never without the shakti shakti is never without the lord and that's why all the you know deities in the hindu tradition are happily married because shakti and shiva here are one and the same okay and then what do we have so then you know the five uh, you know this is a uh, you know this is a deity which is called ashtamurti another name for lord dakshina murti is ashtamurti and this is something that is there made very clear even in the uh, what is its name Yeah, in the uh, upadesha saram which is a uh, wonderful uh, text uh, written by bhagavan ramana maharshi and so there he calls ashtamurti bhrit so the one who is ashtamurti and so ashtamurti means eight aspected deity so what are the eight things that make up this deity so first we have the five elements and the earth is is the whole stone from which the deity is carved the earth element and then we have fire here you know holding in the brandishing in the left upper hand we have water in the form of ganga mata ganga ji on the head water and then we have you know the air element here where the dreadlocks the copious dreadlocks of the lord are tied up you know in the form of a bandhana what do you call bandhana in english bandana <laughs> that is what it is this is the bandana coming here across the you know face so this is a subtle nod to the earth element 
and then we have so we have water you know we have fire and uh, sorry not earth air element we have earth in the in the whole persona of the deity then we have air here then what is left space and the space is here in the upper right hand damaru because space and sound are connected and what's inside the damaru is what makes it you know what makes it sound and so that is five elements and then we have the two celestials we are constantly affected by and come into contact with namely the sun and the moon we have the sun here and the moon you know sun the moon always decorates the lord's forehead chandra shekhara is another name but here we have included the sun also and then you know so that is seven elements are all seven you know aspects are already there but what is the eighth one the eighth one is you the one who is looking at the lord non separate from the lord is you in fact without you looking at the lord there is no lord and this is to show that without the student there is no teacher when you invoke the teacher that mean the student comes along the student without the student there is no teacher at all and then in the lower two hands here in the left lower hand on the feminine side is the veda shruti mata the shruti is there so he is expounding the veda and he is expounding the upanishads and we have already talked we are at length about the chin mudra yesterday and you know so that completes the uh, that completes the whole Uh, symbolism of dakshina murti something that we will be revisiting again but since i since we already had the picture up i thought i will do that so that we don't have to keep uh, you know putting the picture up okay so now we will say you know we will say uh, a small goodbye to the form of the lord here and then go to the next verse okay so that is that now you see how this classroom functions uh, we can you, you can uh, see that now we are back to the classroom mode show and tell is over and so we take up the uh, the next verse what is the next verse uh, you know the next verse uh, dhyana shloka is uh, uh, you know is this one vata vita pi samipe भूमि भागे निषण्णम सकल मुनिजनानाम ज्ञानदातारमारात त्रिभुवन गुरुमीशम दक्षिणा मूर्ति देवम जनन मरण दुख छेद दक्षम नमामि सो दैट इज द next verse vata vitapi samipe samipe means near vitapa means branches branches and uh, you know twigs etc things that are parts of the tree so that which has vitapin means that which has branches a different way to you know look at tree a definition of tree is vitapin so the one who has branches and in the you know context of the compound it becomes vitapi so what a vitapi samipe so what a vitapi what a vitapa means here the one that has branches and the one that is uh, uh, what a vriksha a banyan tree with branches a banyan tree that has branches this seems a little redundant way of looking at things if i say banyan tree what a what a means it's, it's understood it's a banyan tree then why do i have to say banyan tree with branches <laughs> that seems redundant that's because we don't know how the banyan tree works we don't know ah and if we know we will see that there is a there is a relevance here so the banyan tree has branches all right but those branches are actually roots ah the branches come and then they they are downward going the branches go down instead of up you know giving rise to the uh, you know the same metaphor in the 15th chapter of the bhagavad gita urdhva moolam adha shakham 
yeah so the roots are somewhere above and then the branches are coming below so the what starts off as a branch and you think okay the tree has to have branches it's okay let it branch out no problem let it it will give shade it will give fruits it is nice but then this is a sneaky branch what does it do it branches doesn't branch out it branches downward and if you see the banyan tree you have these stringy things you know the branches the so called branches come down and take root and then start up again so you don't really have a banyan tree you have a banyan grove yeah and then what is that banyan tree represent the banyan tree represents the uh, you know the constantly reproducing samsara samsara reproduces yeah faster than rabbits samsara reproduces why because it it just grows on itself and even though you don't want it it grows on you yeah and then then you say my how i am groaning you it grows and you groan that's what happens how does this happen because there is a connection between karma and karma phala this is important yeah karma and karma phala are connected because you know who is the person who defines oneself as a samsari the person who defines oneself as a samsari is the one who is you know afflicted why are you afflicted because nothing is going the way i want it to proceed that person will tell that's why i'm afflicted the weather doesn't behave how i like there is climate change too much snow or too much heat and now we have this kind of a winter cyclone called bomb cyclone <laughs> it's like a ice bomb has gone through now the whole uh, you know midwest has gone through this bomb and now the bomb is going eastward you know so like this there are all these new new things we had never heard of before and so we don't like that i don't like that somebody can say and then you know nothing is going according to what i want i'm not getting what i want half of the problem of samsara oh then what's the other half as though this was not enough i am getting only the things i don't want and then i am not getting what i want these so these are two fold things of samsara that make up samsara and then if you really unpick and unpack samsara what do you get you you see that you are right in the midst of it your own prejudices and your own preferences make samsara for you uh, that's what happens because you see the thing is the inability to cope with what is and yesterday i told you what is is ishwara and so what is includes what is in your life correct and that's ishwara the inability to cope with it the inability to have you know um, uh, what is that the adjustability the inability to have surrender and uh, acceptance there is no acceptance of what comes there is no surrender to whatever is you know going on so instead what does the average person try to do frantically seeks to change the course of affairs using the free will in order to you know either stave off the results of action or right the results of action by unleashing another set of actions actions karma result of action karma phala so the samsara is not something outside of you it is in fact created by you itself and that is how the second uh, you know mantra starts very beautifully the dhyana shloka so that's why it starts with vata vita pa vata vita pi so that which is branched that which is a tree and it has branches what a silly thing to say but no here it makes total sense it's not silly at all we find why because it is you know these branches are roots and and they take root where in the in the heart of lack in the heart that is sensing a lack in a heart that is identified firmly with you know i am not good enough therefore i have to do something i have to be something i have to achieve something i have to go somewhere i have to you know uh, get something i have to gain something i have to lose something starting with weight so like this you know this is the whole problem 
the whole problem is just this karma karma phala tug of war yes i do something i don't like the results i do something again in order to cancel out the result or in order to make the results more favorable to me and then this karma karma phala karma karma phala build up here symbolically is represented to as a branch that which branches out innocently enough i didn't like this so i initiated more karma and then it takes root because karma begets karma phala karma phala gives birth to more karma and more karma and karma phala and then all the time avidya is sitting mata avidya the matriarch of this whole tree of samsara this is the samsara family tree and the matriarch is self ignorance she is in her place on her throne eating cashew nuts yeah i not peanuts because peanuts is for the you know for the masses she is the matriarch she needs something little more costly yeah cashew nuts she is eating correct yeah and she is just sitting there eating nuts and then what and then the jeeva is driven nuts that's what that's what the whole thing is and so the samsara family the family tree of self ignorance is indeed the tree of samsara there is no other tree and that tree is you know is, is what is the banyan tree and why is it called banyan tree because the first three were letters of that banyan is what is important for us you know lord dakshina murti bans samsara the knowledge of the lord as oneself you know the teaching of the upanishad bans samsara <laughs> that's why it's called banyan yeah ban it that's what it is and samsara is individually you know identified and manifest there is no such thing as samsara it is there in the head of the person who is filled with ragadveshas but then why am i filled with ragadveshas if you wonder that's because of what avidya then why do i have avidya okay now you are asking the right question and in fact that doesn't have an answer all you need to know is this avidya can be banned we don't have to keep suffering with avidya which makes one a frantic seeker and this frantic seeker is you know this is the family tree of avidya so first we have what the matriarch what is the matriarch's name atma agnyanam atma avidya so her you know her name is avidya nanda not vidya nanda <laughs> yeah avidya nanda and uh, you know there is no ananda but that's an irony there is no ananda in avidya but there is this is ironical we are just you know uh, having some kind of a you know um, sarcastic irony here and then what does you know so so what does avidya give birth to if you go down the family tree of avidya then avidya gives birth to kama because i don't know who i am i'm not in touch with my own glory then i am you know i am i have made a mistake centered on the i and therefore what i am subject to a lot of you know raga and dveshas i identify with the raga and dveshas as the truth of myself and frantically start a you know start a big project life after life after life to fulfill the raga dveshas in order to feel good in order to feel better in order to feel that i can accept myself in order to get rid of the self loath to ban the self loath instead what have, what is the person doing you know under the grip of atma avidya the person is trying to make the you know finite into infinite and then they, thereby create more problems because the finite can never become infinite finite plus finite still finite doubly finite you know and then what and so then the uh, you know kama the desires all the raga dvesha symbolized by the raga dvesha when they have children what is that you know karma action that frantic movement is the action and then what karma and then karma karma has twins what uh, you know when karma gives birth to uh, never one baby always two babies what are they papa and punya so results of action that are conducive to dharma you know give rise to punya favorable you know 
circumstances generating favorable circumstances in the here or the hereafter over that we have no control and then papa means what unfavorable circumstances to be experienced exhausted in the here or hereafter uncomfortable situations and so then papa punya when they have baby then it will be what punar janma <laughs> ah, rebirth into the same cycle and that's what my dear friends the banyan tree represents the banyan tree represents this endless cycle of samsara that's what it is because the branches you know in innocently enough start off as branches become roots and then you know becomes another tree it's endless so therefore lord dakshina murti manifested himself where you know underneath the banyan tree saying i got this tree's number and uh, here i am and how does this say vata vitapi samipe near this constantly branching burgeoning endlessly burgeoning tree bhumi bhage at the root of it all bhumi bhage means near on the floor on the floor on near on the earth near the roots of the banyan tree because that's the root of samsara so near the root of all the ragadveshas to root out that and when lord dakshina murti you know manifested at the on the ground at the foot of the banyan tree at the root of the banyan tree decided to stay there and sit there nishannah seated what a vita pi samipe bhumi bhage nishannam nishannah means you know seated nishannam unto that unto the one that is seated because here we are saying nam, namaha you know or namami uh, i i worship i salute who you know and that's why who the one i salute is the one sitting it is in the object case sitting under this banyan tree representing samsara big bad samsara never ending samsara for every jeeva who is who is completely uh, uh, you know identified with a sense of with a notion that one is incomplete with a notion that one has a lack centered on the self with a notion that that lack can be fixed doing some frantic actions all that you know so to dispel these notions in other words to ban these notions you know lord dakshina murti manifests under the banyan tree so bhumi bhage nishannam nishannam nishannah means seated meaning not going anywhere meaning what as long as there is samsara for you i am there this is the ashwasana the the uh, what is that Uh, solace given by lord dakshina murti i'm not going anywhere it's not that he manifested in a hurry okay okay come on you know <laughs> my time is up quickly tatvamasi okay you know get up get packing you know we, we don't have time you know I, i have to go and do other things i have to manifest somewhere else no because he's all complete all pervasive can manifest anywhere and yet be all pervasive this is the nature of the lord limitless purnah and so and then manifesting sitting with a soft smile we saw that yesterday we saw all the uh, symbolisms with the, with the, with the photo you know of the lord and then so here you know seated happily smiling and then there is no rush i'm here to have a cup of tea and teach you how not to repeatedly fall into the samsara how repeatedly not to come under the spell of the banyan tree which looks very beautiful but really is very cloying you know it clings to you and it you know puts you in its tentacles and therefore what how to come out of it i'm going to teach and it's going to take a while why because you know shravanam shravanam is not one time why because unlike uh, the uh, you know sages seated at the foot of the lord you know they are what are called uh, uttama adhikaris uttama adhikari me- means highly evolved we saw that's why they are elderly they are represented as elderly 
they have all the qualifications that are needed for the knowledge to take place and all that Lord Dakshina Murthy had to do is show Tatvamasi in the sign language and they got it because they are sukshma, their brain, uh, sorry, their buddhi is sukshma, subtle, you know, alert and fully cleaned, swept, cobwebs of Ragadvesha are gone, swept, uh, you know, fully of all kinds of prejudices, all kind of frantic activity and those who know that through this activity nothing will come except more samsara, therefore I need the knowledge, the ones who know, you know, they got it like that. But usually people are not uttama adhikaris, that is, you know, what is that? That is at the high end of the continuum. So this is an ideal type, always found in the Upanishads. Like we marvel at Nachi, Nachiketa, baby Nachiketa, I mean he's seven, eight years old. Most of the time people are, you know, seven, eight year old, what will the seven, eight year old do? Seven, eight year old is crying, I don't have this toy, buy me this, do me this, give me that. You know, my brother hit me, my sister is mean. This is what the seven year old is doing, but here Nachiketa is saying, give me that knowledge which is beyond dharma. You know, amazing. And so therefore, you know, these are all ideal type shishyas. So that is on one end of the continuum. What is on the other end, the low end of the continuum? We have adhama adhikari, adhikarinaha. So those, you know, students, those shishyas who don't understand anything. Why? Because they are riddled with tamas, full of tamas. Uh, Tattvamasiya, whatever, you know, full of tamas and full of, you know, slothfulness and full of, uh, you know, raga, dvesha, not wanting to learn and, you know, or wanting to learn something else. Why Vedanta has to be like this? Why only I need knowledge? Why can't I just, you know, intuit my way out of samsara? This is, you know, this is all, you know, when this comes in the way and one, you know, goes away from the teaching, you know, this is all, uh, what is that? Adhama adhikaris, they will not be able to sit there. They will not be able to sit there at all, even for five minutes, you know, they will go away. And where are the Adhama adhikaris? Adh Adhama adhikaris also a textbook case, not in real life. In, in in the empirical reality, we usually, you know, have students falling in the middle of the continuum, Madhyama Adhikaris. So, neither fully developed nor fully undeveloped. Somewhere in the middle, they are in the process of evolving and le letting go of the notions and prejudices and, you know, and then they are the people who are there and then what happens, you know, for them, you know, Dakshinamurti says, okay, please sit and do Shravanam. Shravanam means a committed exposure to the teaching. That itself gives the knowledge. A committed exposure means a few Upanishads have to be studied. That's why the Lord is not standing on one leg to teach and, and saying, okay, I'm out of here. When will the class be over? No, that's why the Lord is seated. As long as there is samsara, the antidote to samsara is sitting at the foot of samsara for you. Because samsara is individual. It is not collective. There is no such thing as samsara other than what you see through the lens of ragadveshas. And when those lenses come down, when the scale, the cataract of that ragadvesha comes down from the vision, all you see is Bhagavan, you don't see samsara. You see more and more and more Bhagavan in and through the fears, in and through the difficulties, it is all Bhagavan. It is something to be worshipped and reveled in as the truth of oneself. And so therefore, if you see samsara, that means there is something wrong with the vision. It is the cataract of ragadveshas have to be removed with a scalpel of knowledge. Asanga shastrena dridhena chitva, 15th chapter of the Gita says, how to fell the tree of samsara? You need the scalpel of asangatvam. Asangatvam means uninvolved, the, the ability to watch the ragadveshas, the ability to overcome the ragadveshas by being the witness to them, not by identifying with them and following them. Ah. And so, Asanga Shastrena Dridhena Chitva, 
chitwa means to cut that you know tree you know how to fell the tree you fell the tree by you know by uh, uh, sharpening the razor or the saw of viveka and vairagya that is asangatvam viveka i know the spoof of samsara vairagya i am not buying into the ragadveshas that make up this samsara and the tree comes down and so here too you know lord dakshina murti is sitting at the foot of the banyan tree and showing how to you know what is that sharpen the scalpel of knowledge yeah the sharpening stone is the upanishad this is the ready this is the buddhi the knife is the buddhi and the knife of the buddhi is sharpened on the stone of the upanishad on the stone of all the vedic you know mahavakyas they sharpen the buddhi and then what samsara falls down you don't even have to fell the tree you have to remove the cataract with that razor and then samsara falls down automatically the tree of samsara doesn't even fall it disappears and only lord dakshinamurthy is left there and and you are there as him you also are not there as separate from the lord very beautiful so that's why he is seated you know at the foot of the banyan tree and then who is surrounding again is uh, you know uh, so what is he doing is he just simply you know eating cake or doing something there what is he doing is given in the second line sakala muni jananam gyana dataram namami so we have to take the la- let's take the last word here you know namami i worship i bow to uh, you know i you know salute reverentially i bow to i do pranam i you know do namaskar my namaskar to who and all these to who it is is given in am 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 second case i told you of the masculine akaranta you know words and so and then what happens you know here gnana uh, dataram uh, and gnana dataram namami i bow to the gnana data the uh, datr to the giver of knowledge knowledge of what i told you sharpening the scalpel of viveka vairagya and seeing the spoof of samsara that is the knowledge that you you are not separate from what you want you are already that you seek no i want a better job why to feel better about myself you are already fine you are already approvable i want a better marriage why in order to enjoy my life you are already the source of enjoyment with or without the marriage with or without the sixth marriage you are still fine i want you know i want children to obey me why why do why should anybody obey you because then i will feel good i have adhipatya i have aishwarya i have rulership you are already ishvara your aishwarya extends to all the worlds <laughs> ha huh. and so therefore this is what is taught this is the knowledge the most sacred knowledge for which people you know crave this knowledge and you know for, for lifetimes this is what is taught under the foot of the banyan tree symbolizing what that where there is samsara there itself the knowledge is taught the knowledge is not somewhere away from samsara in some heaven or something no right here that is what is jeevan mukta jeevan mukta means right here right now it is it is you know it is uh, uh, dismissed samsara is dismissed you don't have to go somewhere else to gain gain this knowledge right at the foot of the problem samsara is dismissed samsara is given a big kick and the personage of dakshina murti shows how to see everything as one and the raga dveshas are put at the heel and not allowed to rise this is what the whole thing is the raga raga dveshas are firmly you know firmly interrogated and integrated into one's life so gnana dataram namami and who, and to whom is this gnanam given sakala muni jananam so this gnanam is given look at the second line of the second verse sakala muni jananam to all those who are manana shilaha manana shilaha means munayah manana shilatvat manana shila means those who are 
contemplative by nature. Those who have enquiring minds, jignasus. So jignasus are there and they have an enquiring mind and they are, you know, seriously conducting self-enquiry. Not by themselves, with the help of a teacher, but before even, you know, gaining the teacher, they have already gone to a certain extent of being able to, being able to, you know, enquire into the ragadveshas and, and see that that is the problem. They have shraddha, they have bhakti, they are willing to be taught, they are ready for teaching munayaha, you know. So munayaha, so sakala muni jananam, so anybody anywhere that has, uh, who is a jignasu, desirous of this knowledge, who, who has shraddha, bhakti, patience, sitiksha, etc., all those qualifications for the knowledge, they are the ones that are taught jnana dataram, sakala muni jananam, and what is this arat, you know, jnana dataram, arat, you know, so this Aras doesn't go with Jnana Dataram, it goes with Sakala Muni Jananam Arat Jnana Dataram Namami. And this Arat, this word is a funny word. It's an indeclinable. And uh, it's it comes in one of those uh, kind of directional, uh, you know, uh, what is that? Indeclinables, you know, such as Purasat, you know, Puras in front, you know, and then Paschat, you know, behind, Purasthat, Paschatat, and then Adhasthat, below, and then above, Uparishthat, like this, you know, and then we also have Aratat, you know, Arat or Aratat, so the Tat is another suffix to this Arat, Arat, you know, is a funny word, uh, and I'll tell you why it's a funny word, because simultaneously, uh, simultaneously it means both near and far. <laughs> Make up your mind. How can it be both near and far? Remote, arat. Near, arat. Are? So how are, we, how are we going to see what is this here? So therefore we have to not take it, I mean I suppose you uh, decide the meaning from the context, but here the, the context is also vague, it's nothing to do with the direction. Sakala muni jananam arat jnana dataram. So therefore what we have to say, we have to give it a slightly, you know, metaphoric meaning here. Arat means, you know, directly giving the knowledge, immediate knowledge. That, you know, when the Munis are ready, when the Jignasus are ready for the knowledge, you know, he doesn't make them wait. Yeah, you took several lifetimes to get ready for the knowledge and now you are rushing me. No, wait now. No such thing. As soon as they are ready for the knowledge, he gives directly, immediately. One meaning of the word Arat. Next meaning of the word immediate, meaning knowledge is always immediate. How long does it take for me to say, you are the whole? And how long does it take for you to understand that and enjoy that? There is no time. There is no time, just like when I say, you know, when I tell you, this, you know, is, is something, you know, this is a recorder. If I tell you and show you, how long does it take for you to see this and know this? Doesn't take very long at all. You see this and as long as your eyes are working, and you are able to see this and as long as your ears are working and you are able to hear me say this is recorder, this is pot, this is cat, this is mat, this is hat knowledge is immediate as long as the pramana, the correct pramana or the means of knowledge is being used that is what makes the knowledge immediate huh? immediate because there is no such thing as first I see the recorder and then I go home and then the recorder shines in my, you know, understanding. No. Oh, I have to practice, I have to meditate and contemplate recorder, recorder, recorder and then the knowledge of the recorder shines in the, in the meditation, in the form of a blue light. No such nonsense. No such thing. There is no theory and practice when it comes to knowledge because knowledge is as true as the object. And that's why the word arat is a brilliant word here because the knowledge is immediate. So the knowledge is as true as the object. It's not, you know, if I say, please look at this wonderful mango, early mango of the season has come. You know, please look at this mango if I say, 
then you know you will immediately reject that you will immediately reject that uh, understanding that because it's a wrong understanding why because immediately you can see that this is not a mango even if you after the class have a half an hour of meditation saying what the what i saw was mango what i saw was mango it's not going to become mango and you know it so therefore in knowledge there is no theory and practice including the knowledge of the self you are whole who really that's all you can say how that we can teach how is very easy to teach how come i am whole because what you seek is what you want because you are not the truth the truth of you is not the sum total of the body mind sense complex body is you but you are not the body mind is you but you are not the mind senses are you but you are not the senses very easy to teach this and so the knowledge is immediate immediately it takes place and that's why the sages so it all you know immediately understand there is no gap between the knowledge of the self given by the teacher and that which is you know understood by the student and neither is there a theory most people have this problem so the, what the teacher gives is theory then i have to go and practice it there is nothing to practice all practices are for the sake of understanding this so the practice comes before the theory uh, so to so to speak in vedanta ha <laughs> ah, in vedanta everything is upside down the tree of samsara is upside down you know everything is paradoxical and samsara itself is upside down i thought it was out there but it is in here he where the raga dveshas are situated and so everything is is standing on the head and so here too this is also standing on the head so if vedanta is is suppose uh, vedanta is not theory vedanta is you and you are neither theory nor nor practice there is something to know and you are the whole that's what it is so all the practices then what for the practices what for the meditation what for dharma what for titiksha practicing patience and forbearance what for all the various things that the upanishad outlines what for all those things that is all for the sake of understanding this that is all for the sake of gaining preparation in the form of you know subduing the raga dve apasvara of raga dveshas making all the raga dveshas into a little you know ball and then making it you know put the putting the discipline of the foot uh, you know the foot of enlightenment on the raga dveshas that's all it is all the practices is to tie corral the raga dveshas and keep them suspended so that one can gain the knowledge so the practice comes before the knowledge not after this is vedanta <laughs> and so therefore arat arat means this knowledge is not just gnanam but vigyanam in the upanishad we have these two words and when they appear you know side by side you know it means that vigyanam means direct knowledge directly experienced and understood this knowledge is experienced because it is it is you and you are always experienced are you experiencing yourself now are you here now yes how do you know i know how do you know that you know because i am experiencing that i know that's all it is atma is anubhuti swarupa it is in the form of anubhuti it is in the form of experience all the time there is never a time you don't experience yourself and so you don't you know you you are the witness of even sleep dream waking all these states and who are you you are the stateless i that which visits all these states that is all pervasive enough to visit and light up the states of waking dream and sleep without being the either the waker or the dreamer or the sleeper who are you you are the satchidananda atma called here as turiya turiya is not the fourth state it is you it is you that is stateless and that stateless i is visiting these states and lighting up these states and this is what is always experienced so atma gyanam self knowledge cannot be one more special experience if it is a special experience it will always be limited ha the special experience you know as pujya swami ji would say is always for a special person 
who is a special person in in the guru's vision in swami dayananda ji's vision the special person is the one who needs a specialist yeah because if after all this you keep saying i need to practice the knowledge then you know then even lord dakshina murthy cannot help one 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 is then branded as a special person who needs a specialist and so that's why arath here is actually clinches the whole you know whole mantra to show that this is what is you know is 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 immediate knowledge the knowledge of the self because the self is immediately experienced not as an object but as the very subject itself that is what it means by self revealing tribhuvana gurum isham so this ishvara in the form of the teacher in the form of the guru and what kind of a guru tribhuvana guru so wherever in the the guru of all the three worlds wherever there is ignorance dakshina murti applies in all those worlds because it's not just for bhuloka bhuhu bhuvah subah you can take or tribhuvana generally you can take any world anywhere having human like beings you know they may be look funny they may have some you know proboscis coming out like that <laughs> of insects you know you find in the comical depiction of aliens so to speak you know they may look funny but they also will have the same problem as long as there is free will to run the raga that fuel the raga dveshas to run with the raga dveshas tribhuvanam bhuvana gurum so the guru for all the three worlds not that there is a different guru somewhere because the problems are one and the same guru for all the worlds wherever there is you know wherever people are experiencing samsara and then what isham this ishvara who is manifest as the guru tribhuvana guru meesham dakshina murti devam deva here is not deity deva means the self shining one who is not separate from myself oh so the teacher is not separate from myself no you are sachidananda atma you are that awareness you are aware of yourself and you are aware of everything everything in the world becomes evident to you the self your own self is evident to you and so to hear what you are evident to yourself the teacher also is that awareness alone along with the body mind sense complex called teacher and you are also that self evident self along with the body mind self uh, sense complex called student this is upadhi bheda alone upadhi means different conditioning elements like the body mind etc but otherwise it's that same awareness that deva from div to light up you know the you know that which lights up everything all the time and that which lights up you know in the form of this knowledge alone that which lights up the ignorance and removes it as well that dakshina murti we have seen the word dakshina murti in detail so the one who is daksha daksha means what the adept at cutting the cords of samsara and the one who faces south so that you don't have to be afraid of death makes you immortal by facing south and by so that you can face north which is uh, immortality by facing immortality you uh, and uh, the truth of yourself in the form of this knowledge you leave death behind because you are no longer you know connected to this uh, belief that you are as good as the body and who is this dakshina murti what does the dakshina murti do janana marana dukh khachhed dakshaha so dakshaha the one who is adept at what janana marana dukhachhedaha so the one chhedaha chid you know chid means the one who cuts yeah janana marana dukhachhid and chhedaha masculine form here and so the one who cuts what the cords that link you to birth that make you identify as i am born i am gone i will be gone what is this life of born and gone and then you know i want to not be born i want to not be gone i want permanence and how to make a perma- how to how to gain that which is permanent 
go have a perm you know for the hair <laughs> that's the only permanent that you can find in samsara nothing else is permanent and even the so called permanent hairstyle then after a while it loses its body you have to go get that permanent again then why is it called permanent to fool you like that that's all it is just like the elixir of life you know all these things that are be being completely touted and the every day one one new new super food and then there is this chia seed you know this chia seed was again for you know lonely people long time ago they you know they used to uh, put all the seeds in the form of a little cat and then you water the seed and it grows into a grassy cat and then it was called a chia pet and you keep pruning it and petting it this was for <laughs> lonely people who are identified with loneliness you know in the in the 80s and 90s now that chia pet is gone and instead you don't you know make the seeds into the form of a puppy and and then what are it you eat the seeds yeah you make chia smoothie and then everything chia 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 and then what you know whole day you keep you know chia mantra because it has so many antioxidants and everything and then of course in america everyone overdoes everything there is no you know there is no middle ground at all there is no middle path and then we 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 understand that you know the person had too much chia then what happens if you have too much chia 3 days you don't come out of the bathroom that's all <laughs> that's all that's what happens if you have too much of anything yeah that's all it is you know you are you, you know you are well aware of every tile in the bathroom you have become a you know you have become a gyani that's what it is because you are spending you know 72 hours in the bathroom this is what happens so then like this you know all these antioxidant super foods the aztecs ate it you know and this one ate it and the mayans ate it and some old grain and suddenly everything you know becomes a thing why because i don't want to die are just sit in front of dakshina murti death will be gone dukh the you know marana chheda hai janma chheda hai the next life is also gone no need no need to be born again because that which is the kilaka the the linchpin that is holding the birth, you know birth death uh, saga in place is agnyanam that is gone so there is no need for birth oh, if i am not born i will not be are you are uh, you are ishvara you are one with ishvara what more do you want you know so janana marana and then in between janana and marana what is there dukha the baby comes crying into the universe cry 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 baby and then cry inner baby all the time crying and so this this crying is gone so in between the janana and marana the what is that called the um, birth and death are the book ends yeah they are the ends of the book case in the middle is all kinds of sorrow sorrow from you know childhood sorrow from uh, adolescence big book big many volumes and then sorrow from young adulthood sorrow from marriage sorrow from children sorrow from you know grandchildren all kinds of things sorrow from job sorrow from retirement sorrow all these sorrows are there between birth and death all of them are you know sipped up completely by the lord by the knowledge given by the lord and so by this knowledge by his grace by the grace of this knowledge the one who cuts through these cords tam dakshina murti devam namami yeah very beautiful more we'll see tomorrow some very nice verses are coming up and they won't be as involved 